Welcome to the Sound Advice Podcast, a resource for entrepreneurs and small businesses looking for honest insights and go-to strategies for digital marketing. I'm Kelvin, and my wife Phyllis, Hey. and I will share what's working, what's changing, and how to navigate the sometimes unpredictable world of business ownership. Yes, we're experts at figuring things out, well, figuring them out eventually, and we're here to share it all. The good, the bad, and the stuff we've learned about working at home together every day, all day. So let's jump in. Hi, and welcome back to the Sound Advice Podcast. This is Phyllis, and Kelvin is with me again today. Nope. Yeah. And we are um, still podcasting about podcasting. We've got a couple more to to share with you. Today, we're really going to talk about some of the planning steps that you need to do as you're getting started. The good news is that lots of these things we're going to talk about today, you really just sort of have to do once. Once you kind of get it started and you you make a couple of these early decisions, uh, you're well on your way to having your podcast ready to go. Yes. You got to start somewhere. Yeah, you do. Name would be good? Yes, absolutely. That's a great point. What are you going to call your podcast? You got to give it a name. doesn't have to be perfect. doesn't have to be great. It should be original. It should be unique. Uh, you really shouldn't infringe on someone else's trademark. And it should your show should be original enough not to be confused with other shows so that you can it can be found. It should be, you should, it should be descriptive. People search for podcasts on mobile devices, so you may only get a brief glimpse to show that your show is of interest to them. It should be easy to pronounce and spell, like Sound Advice Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it easier to remember. Yeah, it does. Those are great points. So what you might want to do, if you're playing around with some words, um, I've had people ask me, does it have to be the exact same name as my business? The answer is no. I mean, Sound Advice is part of the name of our business, and it just made sense to also be the name of our podcast. Plus, we like to think that we're giving you sound advice. Yes. Well, we're trying to, for sure. But it does not have to be the same. So give yourself some freedom. Kelvin made a really good point. I think that this is probably the one of the easiest ways is to think about if you know the kinds of con- the type of content you're going to be providing to your audience. Think about what they might be typing into a search bar, whether it's in a Google search or a search on iTunes. Like what kinds of things are they going to be searching? So in our case, like maybe they're searching for information about podcasting, right? So our podcast might come up that way. One of the things you might want to do is a little bit of research. Number one, you want to make sure that somebody else doesn't have a podcast of the exact same name. That would be a good idea. Yes. For example, there actually is a podcast called Sound Advice. Ours is the Sound Device Podcast. Slight <laughs> difference. But the, the Sound Device Podcast, I don't think actually there's new content being added to that one anymore. I, I could be wrong. I haven't looked at it in a little while. But I don't, I never it's about it um, the audio recording and speaker oh. industry kind of thing. So nobody's going to get us confused. You know, they're, they're, they're going to have a podcast where they're talking about the newest subwoofers on the market. And nobody's really going to confuse that with what we're talking about. Right. So we're not going to get confused. Now, some people may land on that podcast when they're looking for us. And some people might be look, land on our podcast when they're looking for that person's. But I don't think anyone's going to uh, get us confused just once they take a listen and look at the information. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't pop up anymore in a search. I just looked. Okay, well, maybe they've taken it down. So we were talking about uh, sound the Sound Advice. Advice podcast. There is a Sound Advice podcast that takes you to a page that takes you to check out our main website at voiceoverinfo.com. So that's not what we do either. Right. We, we don't we don't do voiceover work. We don't. <laughs> We don't, we, don't tell tell, you, we don't tell you how to do voiceover work. Yeah, either. and as you can tell from listening to the two of us, I don't think anybody's going to be like hiring either one of us to do voiceover work. <laughs> Listen, somebody needs a gravelly old guy voice. You know? <laughs> I doubt that. Yeah. So, okay. Do you need a URL for your podcast? Uh, the answer there is you may, you may not. If 
like us, we had a website. It's Sound Advice Sales. And so our podcast lives there, the notes anyway. And so we just combine that together. Yes, it, the podcast actually lives on Libsyn, but... Yes, which is a great point. That takes us actually to one of the other things that people, you need to set up in the very beginning, which is hosting. I don't want to get really technical, but a podcast is an a, basically an MP3 file. It's an MP3 audio file. And that digital file has to live somewhere. And whether you want to call it the cloud or your hard drive or wherever it may be. Right. It's, exactly. It's, it's got to live somewhere. Right. And so even if you're going to have a modest success, you may, again, have several hundred people who are going to try and listen to that podcast and basically access that file maybe, you know, in the same day. And um, at the same time, uh, yeah, and potentially shortly after it's released. Yeah, so. absolutely. That's very common when um, podcasts, especially if people have subscribed, they're going to get notified. Hey, there's a new episode that came out. And um, a lot of people do download um, new episodes right away. So you have to have a host that can handle that. Most people's websites are not built for that. And we don't recommend using it. It would actually become unless you're an enterprise level company. Um, it would be really, um, it's not cost effective and, um, your hundreds, host, thousands of people trying to download something from your server at the same time or wherever your website lives, uh, is a good possibility that your host of your website's not going to like you anymore. Right. And, and if they, or they're going to charge you a ton of money. But to handle the bandwidth of the downloads. Right. But before they do that, they might just shut your whole site down temporarily <laughs> and go, hey, what's going on? And you don't want that. And you don't want that. So good news. There's really, really simple solutions for this. There's actually a number of companies that do host podcasts, and we specifically recommend using Libsyn. We've been I find using it them. Pretty simple to work with. Yeah, they're really simple to work with. Their pricing is really reasonable. You can start using them. It is a monthly subscription service of five dollars. You can start with as little as five dollars a month. The maximum is seventy-five dollars a month. So if you are become a super star podcaster, and even if you get millions of downloads a year, you're only going to pay Libsyn seventy-five dollars a month, and they're going to serve up those millions of episodes anytime people are listening for you and yeah they do get, a great you job you get the millions of downloads and listeners and it, there'll be all kinds of things open up to you yeah yeah and Lipson takes care of all of that so <clears throat> we just highly recommend it it's it's really all they do they do a great job with it they um and they have a number of resources they also make it really easy to set up on, on numerous platforms what they would call destinations which like iTunes and Stitcher and iHeartRadio and Google Play Voice now which is becoming much more popular there's a number Podcasts of them are becoming a big thing yeah they also for those of you who don't have a website or uh, someplace like that right now maybe maybe your podcasting is going to be the beginning of your um, efforts Libsyn does give you a pretty nice little page. You that can, you can customize to a certain extent. Yeah, to a certain extent. And you get a nice page and it has a link and um, that you could actually share with people and it will have the library of your podcast. There's even a place if you choose to where you can have people comment. You can have a dialogue there, a little discussion back and forth with people. So um, all of that's included and um, there'll be show notes and information more about Libsyn in detail. But you're going to have to have a host somewhere. Your pod, those podcast MP3 files have to live somewhere out in the cloud or <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, so, so you got a name now, uh, possibly a URL. If you don't have one, you might want to get one that's similar or close. Doesn't have to be the same. Uh, if you're going to have your own website, you got a host. What do you got to do now? You got to determine what kind of podcast are you going to have and how often are you going to do it. You know, pretty much anything goes. How often are we going to do it? Right. So, well, weekly, ideally. Um, a lot Oops. Of, yeah. So a lot of people, this is probably one of the number one questions that people ask, which is how often should I like podcast? And I love to, I really do like to say that there are no rules in podcasting because there really aren't. There, it's really what's up to you and what's best for you. If you can't come up with interesting original content once a week, then I, you know, I wouldn't podcast just for the heck of it. <laughs> um, but again, most people 
can generate content and have good information. However, if you want a podcast just for the heck of it, feel free. Exactly, because there are no rules. That's pretty much. The other thing is, I will tell you, though, if you do want to build an audience and if you're podcasting as part of to support a business or to maybe because you're an author and you have books and things like that and you want, you know, you really want to engage with your audience, consistency is definitely going to be your friend. So if once a week is nice. We know one of our clients, well, several of our clients, they have schedules. And so it comes out every Tuesday morning or every Saturday morning and um, their clients and their listeners know to expect it then. And, and honestly, we're, we're hearing, and we, we've now learned that some people plan their day around that. So they're, yeah. They, sure. they plan on Tuesday mornings, this podcast is going to go live. And so I know that's what I'm going to listen to on my way to work or when I'm taking my morning jog or I'm hitting the treadmill going at the, the park, gym. Going for a walk. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Whatever. So do what's best for you, but consistency is your friend. Styles, Coben touched on this a little bit. You know, interview podcasts are very popular. Um, you can do a hybrid. You can do sometimes interviewing um, lots of podcasts if are out there are um, news slash sort of current events related, right? Where people are just giving their insight and opinion and maybe commenting on the news of the day, so to speak, or trends in their industry. If there, it's a specific to an industry or a particular um, topic. Did you, did, did you cover interview? I said interview was really popular. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was going to yeah. say. I'm sorry. Yeah. Wait, we've had an, an interruption in the studio here <laughs> yeah it's called a cat our, yeah our cats jumped up on the table here so um one of the hazards of <laughs> podcasting from home yeah <laughs> she's okay. yeah she's rambling around okay so the other thing one of our clients does a q a type podcast yep absolutely um that's Every also week. i think really popular um so you know Anything really goes. Um, I mean, some people do Q and A's with Facebook. Uh, this particular client repurposes that Q and A they do on Facebook as a podcast every week. That's right. Yeah, and it's very popular, and it reaches. It's funny. She actually works with teenage athletes, and so the parents, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now the cat's bumping into my mic. We're gonna have to uh, excuse her. So the parents, I think, listen to the Q and A's on Facebook. And then I think the athletes themselves, the teenage kids, like listen to it on the podcast. <laughs> so she's reaching her target audience in two different ways because those target audiences want to get that information in different ways. Right. The kids don't want to be on Facebook and the parents are usually, I think, driving them to a meet when the kids are listening on their podcast. So, yeah. yes. Yeah. So I will give you an example, too. One thing I wanted to touch on when it comes to frequency, um, there's several podcasts that have become very popular that one, uh, there's a couple, but I'm going to mention one specifically called Being Boss. It's a great podcast. It's two women um, who both own their a small business and they talk. Um, sometimes it's just the two of them talking. Sometimes it's the two of them with a guest. And then uh, sometimes those podcasts run 45 minutes to an hour. And then sometimes they'll do what they call a, a mini-sode or a mini-episode and something timely comes up or maybe one of them has an event-related info or something that they really want to share. And they'll just pop in and they'll do sort of a little episode in the middle um, or whenever they feel like it. And it's much shorter. It might only be about 10 or 15 minutes long. Um, so when we say there are no rules, you know, there really uh, aren't. Well, or, or like uh, with the Q&A show, you decide you're going to have uh, t uh, an interview one one time. Mm -hmm. you, you can you can just throw that in as an extra episode or add it to your regular rotation. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be the same thing all the time. You can mix it up. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So if you've made those decisions and you've got your first couple of episodes and the ideas and you, you kind of know what you want to talk about maybe or you've got your interviews lined up if that's the way you're going to go it's time to start recording absolutely there's a uh like i said uh, in the last episode there's a number of ways you can get started recording you can do it with your phone you know you can get a cheap mic from a number of places to Plug into your laptop, record that way. You can actually use the condenser mic on your laptop. And we'll go into a little more detail about those kinds of things in, in a future episode. But uh, I wouldn't recommend laptop microphones because they're very sensitive. If you type or touch anything or adjust anything on the table, it's going to be heard. 
Uh, it's like cattails hitting our mics. You can hear those kinds of things. So. <laughs> but but you got to start. So at some point, yeah. uh, start recording. No matter what you're recording, even if it's just for fun, you know you got to you got to learn what your style is and and improve your skill. It's just like anything else that you do. Right. Uh, uh, I'm no expert at being on air or on a podcast. Um, but you know, record, record, record. Just get used to hearing yourself and what aspects of your voice do you like? What, what aspects can you improve on? Stop doing that. What I just did. Right. Um, uh, lip smacks, breath sounds. Anyway. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And there's also big explosives like P's and K's and Things like that. I would do them in the mic, but they're really annoying to hear. They are. You know, there's also a couple of things. If you haven't podcasted or you haven't done a lot of this type of thing before, if you've already been doing some speaking or maybe you've done a lot of video type work before, this may not be something you need to worry about. But if this is new to you, find out really what style works for you. Some people really like to have things scripted out. Um, I know someone that actually uses... Me. Yeah, you, well, I, I mean, know, I, I like a script to follow, but it doesn't have to be literally word, word for word. Right, right. An it's, outline. It's obvious we're not a scripted word for word in our podcast. <laughs> um, but I do have, I know somebody who does this and she actually does have it fairly scripted out word for word. She does practice, but she uses a like a teleprompter style app on her iPad, I believe that she can use as she's talking. Some people like to have bullet points and notes. Some people, if you're doing an interview, will go ahead and have questions already in front of them. They may even share those with their guest ahead of time. I would recommend that. Yeah. So you're not going to know what style works best for you until you try a couple of things. Right. So try them out. Listen back to your recordings. I, I don't really like to listen to myself a whole lot. But, but it helps build your confidence in what you're doing. And, it and, really does. And you do get better. Believe it or not, I'm getting better. <laughs> but you do get better. You get better when you listen and you realize things that you say or little ticks if you say so all the time. and So, and, but, and, um. Right. Having said that. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> anyway, so um, we all do it. I love that. Everybody, everybody does these kinds of things. Even the most polished speakers out there do, and they just practice. Watch the news at night that's yes. live and listen to how many times they say, um, because right. they do. Yeah. And... You can't um, help it. It's just part of speech. It is. So we're going to, I think we're going to wrap up at that point. But, the one thing we'll say is to make sure. And the other nice thing we want to remember, we talked about this on the previous episode, but if you haven't heard that one is uh, podcasts are forgiving because that all these little ticks or ums and things like that can and will be edited out. Can, so can be if it's not a. Um, and I'm going to continue talking right after I say it. <laughs> if it's a, um, and then you speak, that can be edited out. Right. Right. So, um, so, um. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Kelvin, anything else before we wrap up? Nope. I'm good. Okay, great. Hopefully that was helpful to you on the show notes at soundadvicesales.com slash podcast. You will find information that we've referenced here, specifically the Libsyn information, so that you can research that and check it out for yourself. And we'll also have some other links to a couple of things that we've talked about so that you can check out those resources. If you have any questions, there's a place on the uh, website where you can ask questions and send them over to us. And we'll be happy to get back with you either personally or we'll answer the question in our next episode. Yep. Thanks for listening. All right. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Sound Advice Podcast. Be sure to visit soundadvicesales.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. If you love this episode of the Sound Advice Podcast, head over to iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time.
This podcast is part of the Sound Advice FM network. Sound Advice FM. Women's voices amplified.